This educational video is brought to you by the Rocky Mountain Goat Alliance, dedicated to the expansion and enhancement of mountain goat conservation. There is one animal that lives almost exclusively in the steepest, most rugged terrain North America has to offer, the mountain goat. With its thick white coat, specially shaped hooves, and muscular frame, it is uniquely adapted to live in the harshest conditions of the high alpine. There are approximately 100,000 goats distributed over 10 states in the American West and four Canadian provinces and territories. Mountain goat hunting presents a unique challenge, not only because of the steepness of the terrain, but also because it is so difficult to tell the difference between a billy and a nanny while in the field. Mountain goats exist in a matriarchal society where the oldest nannies play a key role in educating younger goats about seasonal habitat use patterns and predator avoidance. Mountain goats have low recruitment rates and typically nannies do not rear young until the age of four. As a result, the accidental harvesting of breeding age females can have a negative impact on the herd while selective harvesting of mature billies will ensure the vitality of the population. Being sure to harvest a mature billy is a key part of being a true conservationist. Let's take a look at what happens to the future of a mountain goat herd if a hunter harvests a billy rather than harvesting a nanny with a kid. In a micro population of mountain goats, if a billy is harvested, the nannies are left to rear offspring and will continue to birth kids year after year leaving a population of 14 goats after five years. If a nanny with a kid is harvested, it is very likely that the kid will not survive. The impact compounds over time, only allowing the population to grow to seven goats after five years. When trying to differentiate between a billy and a nanny, there are three main things you're gonna be looking at. Horns, body, and behavior. It is important to use all of these indicators when determining the gender of a goat in the field. We will also discuss field judging and how it can be used to make the identification process easier. One of the most effective ways of identifying a billy is by stalking in close enough to see the size, shape, and configuration of the horns. Gradual horn curvature and the appearance of large, heavy bases and a narrow space between the bases are key identifiers of a billy. An adult billy's horn base will appear wider than the animal's eye. On the other hand, a nanny's horns have a much sharper curve that creates a sort of kink at the tip. She'll also have much narrower bases and less overall mass when compared to a billy. A nanny's horn base will appear narrower than the animal's eye. Another key identifier of a billy is the presence of enlarged black glands, which are used to distribute the animal's scent. Both billies and nannies have glands, though the billies will stand out much clearer. Body size is useful in quickly identifying and sorting through kids, yearlings, and adults. Kids are easily recognizable by their small body size. A mature billy can weigh up to 300 pounds and will have a large hump at the top of the shoulder. They will have a long face, a horse-like muzzle, and appear much stockier than nannies. A mature nanny can still appear large in body size and top the scales at 200 pounds, though more typically, they'll weigh in at around 125 pounds. Nannies will typically have a shorter and narrower face than that of a mature billy. One of the largest pitfalls of using only body size to determine gender happens when comparing a mature nanny and a two to three year old billy because both can appear to be about the same size. That's why it's absolutely critical to use more than just one identifier. Mountain goats are herd animals and are often found in groups of varying numbers. Bands larger than three or four are usually family groups composed of adult females, kids, and immature goats of both sexes. Generally, these may be found in more mellow alpine terrain on nursery slopes, where they frequently feed to promote juvenile growth and store fat for the winter. 
On the other hand, billies usually remain in small bachelor groups or alone, typically in steeper terrain. However, don't rely on this clue in November, when billies can be found in the nanny groups as the breeding season approaches. A concrete behavioral characteristic that differentiates billies from nannies is their urination posture. Billies stretch their hind legs backward to urinate, similar to a large draft horse. Nannies squat in a crouched position, much like a female dog. Mature billies often have a stained patch on their hind quarters. This noticeably dark spot is due to more aggressive digging of beds and the messy marking of territories. Nannies do not typically have this stain. According to Boone and Crockett's scoring method, gross total score of a mountain goat is tallied by totaling the two horn lengths measured in inches and four circumference measurements at the base, quarter, halfway, and three-quarter mark of the horns. At close range, it might even be possible to determine the approximate age of the goat. Look for the growth rings called annuli on the horns. The goat's first and highest growth ring is formed during the animal's second winter. This example here, this billy would be aged at 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, and 5.5 years of age. A horn that appears to be twice the length of the ear is about eight inches, as most billies' ears will be about four inches long. Visualize the horn straightened out and compare it to the length between the tip of the nostril and the corner of the eye. If a horn measures approximately that distance, you're looking at an eight to nine inch horn. Now let's take a look at a few examples and test your knowledge. Let's start off with an easy one. In this situation, look for the narrow space between the bases of the horns. Notice the long horse-like face and the really stocky body makeup. Also, if you compare the length of the horn to the length of the face, this appears to be an exceptional billy. Let's take a close look at this goat. It appears to have narrow bases and a large space between them. It also appears to have a short face. Considering those things, we can identify this goat as a nanny. Here's one that's a little more tricky. This goat appears to have gradually curved horns like a billy, but they do not have a lot of mass. Also, the goat's face is quite short. Don't let this one trip you up. It's a nanny. Watch as this goat approaches. You can see it has a long face. Notice the gradual curvature and mass at the base of the horns. This is a great example of bases larger than the size of the eye. We would identify this one as a billy. Now here's a tough one. Look at all the things we've learned about body, horn curvature, and social behavior. We're comfortable saying that we do not have enough information to make the call on this goat. In this, and with all cases where there is doubt, don't take the shot. The recent development of flat shooting, long range rifles, and laser range finders have left the goat hunter with a moral dilemma. Though rifles in this day and age are capable of shooting very long distances, it's important to try and stalk in as close as you can on a mountain goat to ensure the proper sex identification. Because goats live in such steep and treacherous terrain, make sure that the animal is not going to fall into an unreachable spot after you pull the trigger. You do not want your meat and your trophy to go to waste. This educational video is brought to you by the Rocky Mountain Goat Alliance. The RMGA is committed to its mission to increase and enhance the management, range, and populations of Rocky Mountain goats across both native and suitable non-native North American habitats. If you learned something from this video and want to further test your skills, as well as become a member, we urge you to join our cause at goatalliance.org.